today I'm covering the three major map apps for the overlanding community. I'll be going over Onyx Off-Road, Trails Off-Road, and Gaia GPS. Each of these apps has its pros and cons, but let's find out which will work better for you. And if you're only interested in one specific app, click the time code in the description below to jump straight to that app because this is a pretty in-depth look at each and every one of these. Okay, so we're gonna start here with Onyx Off-Road. So for a while, I actually had a harsh opinion against Onyx because I had a bad experience with them in the early days of using their hunting app. I was one of the early adopters of this technology where you're basically using your phone instead of a traditional GPS system. So the phones weren't up to par back then. And uh, I did have a brand new phone, but I had Onyx Hunt. I had it fail on me several times. This is back before the Onyx off-road stuff existed. And so I had kind of a bitter taste in my mouth for Onyx just because I'd gone backpacking. I went miles into the woods. It had worked several times and uh, all of a sudden it stopped working in the middle of my trip. And when you're backpacking like that, it's kind of more of a survival type of situation. It was something that kind of bothered me because you're relying on this kind of stuff. They're pushing as that kind of a product, so that's what I used, and I stopped using the GPS because it is much better having satellite imagery. So anyway, point being, I had a bad experience with Onyx Hunt, but I have had no bad experiences with Onyx Off-Road. And again, that was years ago before anybody had really heard of Onyx. It was a very new product. So I have been using Onyx a little bit, and like I said, I actually got this for free from a guy at the Overland Expo. If you happen to watch this, thank you very much. He just came up to me in the crowd. He'd won two free subscriptions, and he gave us a code, and that was really cool of him. So now I can compare that to the other apps, and that's why I'm doing this. So I had actually used a free trial a long time ago for Onyx Off-Road, and I didn't particularly care for it. And part of the reason is because, like you're seeing on my screen right now, um, I wasn't that big of a fan of these these colored um, trails and stuff, and I get what they're doing here, but I wasn't personally a big fan of that. And it makes it easy to see the off-road trails and kind of see where you're going, and I really didn't like it. It seems like it's cluttering up the map a little bit more than I would like, but I've kind of gotten used to it, and now it doesn't bother me the same way anymore, and I'm actually it's actually pretty cool. On a previous trip to Utah that I probably just recently published on this channel, um, I went out to Utah by myself for the weekend and I was able to find a really cool campsite near a national park. It was actually on BLM land right outside of the park. But I found a trail that took me to the border of the park. There was nobody else out there. Gaia didn't have that road on there and I wasn't sure that it was an actual trail. Trails off road didn't have it on there, but Onyx had it on there. And um, it's not listed as like a specific trail. It was just showed up on the map as one of these glowing trails. So that was the first time I really appreciated what Onyx is doing, highlighting it and making it easy to find. And uh, it's, it's kind of cool. I don't know how else they would do it to where you can see it really easy. When I first used it, I didn't particularly care for that. But now that I actually was in a situation where it found me one of the cooler campsites that I had last year all by myself, um, I, I kind of appreciate it now. So without going too much farther into that, uh, I just wanted to touch base on the layout of it. One of the things to know about Onyx Maps is that this app is for off-roading. This is not an overlander app. And it would be very cool if they added some features to make it an actual overlander map. And the reason I say it's not an overlander map is because you can't plan a big, long trip with this. The thing about Onyx is like this would be best used with Google Maps and almost like Google My Maps. You can draw lines and stuff on this and save those. So if you wanted to keep that line on the map. So if you're gonna be crossing through this area, you're coming through Glenwood Springs, you could decide that all the stuff that you're gonna be getting onto is gonna be yellow lines. So night two, you're gonna stop along the way and you're gonna go up this trail here. I don't even know what this is, but you're gonna go up this trail here. So you could put some notes in, Make it a dotted line if you wanted to because then you know that these are your places that every night you're going to stop, get off here. So you can put your notes in, night one, and then you can save that. If you're zoomed in and you're going to stop here and camp for the night, you see that there's a pull off here, which it doesn't look like there is, but let's say there was. So if you're going to try to camp here, um, you could. Okay, how big of an area is that? Because some places on maps, it's kind of hard to judge how big of an area a place is. And so now you know that that is 1.26 acres. So if that was on the side of the road, you're like, oh, I've got plenty of room for me and my little camper or whatever it is. So it's a useful feature for that kind of a thing. And as you just saw, it was really easy to do. And of course you got waypoints and then you can add a photo waypoint. 
So if you took a photo with you, you and all your friends on some ledge somewhere in Colorado that you didn't even know existed, you could put a photo on that waypoint and then in the future you'll remember, you'll be like, oh, that's where that was. So that's kind of a cool feature. So you click over here on Discover and it's got all of the trails in the area, which is pretty cool. And it's got plenty of stuff, tells you how long they are and everything. Let's say you're gonna go up to this area. Before all the apps existed, we had the Fun Treks books. That's where a lot of these reviews and stuff come from. And so it gives you a technical rating, which is pretty cool because it gives you an idea of what you're gonna be up against. But my problem with a lot of the rating systems is you have different people that work for this company. They're going out, somebody like myself with 33s on a really heavy FJ, I might go out and I might be like, oh, I would consider that trail was a six. It was kind of hard. So a guy with a Jeep on 37s is doing the same thing with no weight in the back. He might go out and be like, oh, that was a three. And I see that a lot. There's a lot of trails rated in a way that doesn't make sense for everybody. And so it might be like, oh, you could take a stock vehicle up here because somebody took a stock Rubicon up there. But whenever you take your little first gen stock Toyota Tacoma, it's not going to do it. And so... um Anyway, uh, there's different, there's different, too many different opinions on ratings, and there's not really a perfect system for ratings. But uh, anyway, it's kind of cool that it gives you an idea. But as we all know, in Utah and Colorado and places like that, where you have huge melt offs every year, sometimes you'll go down a trail and you'll find a big washout. And in those areas where snow's melting off, going through, sometimes it digs a lot of the sand out, and then there's a place that a stock vehicle just can't get through, or it'll move rocks and stuff in Colorado when the snow melts. It'll move rocks, and then for the year, um, it'll be, you could consider it like a completely different trail. It's, it's way harder. They're going to have to put a rating in, of course. Um, but those rating systems aren't perfect. There actually is a better way to do these ratings. And we'll get to that later. So it tells you what you can take up here, accessible by, which is cool. And then you can also go through and isolate these trails to where it'll only show side-by-side -side stuff. It'll only show ATV or, or dirt bike and stuff like that. So the cool thing about that is you can get rid of the dirt bike apps and get rid of the side-by-side -side stuff. That way when you and your friends go out, you didn't plan a route down a trail and then get there and all of a sudden it's like, oh, this is an ATV route. We can't even fit down this. It's not legal for us to go down this. So it's kind of cool that they have that. So then it tells you best time of the year, summer, fall, overview, overview. And anyway, gives you all this information, tells you how to get there. Pretty neat, I like the way that that is set up. Then there's offline maps, and these are all the ones that I have downloaded to my phone, and then my content, and it tells you all of your waypoints, your, your tracks, areas, all that stuff. Down here, it's kind of cool. Um, I do like that it gives you the temperature and stuff. This is kind of a cool feature, having the weather on here, but don't forget that you're gonna be off grid. So I wouldn't even rely on that. When you're planning something, maybe if it's this weekend or something, you can kind of base off of it. But this information is low, no longer going to be valid. In places like Colorado, for sure, Colorado, Utah, using the weather even a week out is pretty, pretty much invalid. Okay, so Onyx Maps, let's dive into how this one works on the phone app. So you have Discover, Offline Maps, My Content, Tools, and go and track. This is what it looks like as well on CarPlay. It's all 3D and it's actually kind of a neat setup. It's a lot like the desktop app. They are very similar. But anyway, let's get into what we're here for, which is downloading maps. It looks like Onyx is gonna allow you to double up on data just like Gaia does. And I do wish these squares could lock together to make this a little bit easier to download to where you're not doubling up on some of this data, especially with Onyx maps, since this one downloads all of the same layers because it only has three layers. So you can click on the satellite here with 2D and 3D and it'll bring up your base maps, hybrid, and topography. With these different map options, this is the only map options you have. Here's 3D, but 3D will not work. Um, some features not yet available in 3D mode. And also these are not available for offline mode as far as I can see. When you download these, all three of them will download no matter what, which is pretty cool because you don't need to worry about which layers. I don't see why this wouldn't allow you to gridlock and kind of lock onto the other side of this block to where you're not downloading the same data twice because these are all just the same exact layers. So I would think that it would exclude what you've already downloaded. Maybe it does. Um, hopefully somebody from Onyx Maps or something can chime in. And if you do, I will pin that to the top of the comment section to where people can get more information on that. But as far as I can see, just like right here, you can see in this corner that this is overlapping. So I assume that that's doubling up on data. When you download with Onyx, you get five miles wide as an option, which is higher resolution, 10 miles wide, or 150 miles wide. But anyway, so that is how you download them, save, 
and then it will download right away. And it's kind of nice because it'll give you a notification as soon as it's done and it does download extremely fast. Okay, so that is basically the OnX map. There's not really that much more to go over here. We saw a lot of it on the desktop version. Okay, so my pros and cons for OnX Off-Road. Pros are it's impossible not to see what trails are in the nearby area just because they're glowing at you in different colors and they are color coded to where um, I forget what the actual legend is. You can look into that if you use the app, but different colors mean different things and different types of trails. So you can't miss a trail basically, and they're gonna glow in, this, in a color. And so you can isolate it to where you're only seeing a certain color. If you're new to this, you can look for just the easy trails and then you can kind of get your feet wet, which is pretty cool. It'll just leave everything else off the map. And I do like that feature, it's pretty neat. Pro number two is that it's a relatively simple app. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, you know what you're looking at. It's really easy to understand what's happening. And it's just, that's an off-road trail. You have satellite imagery down here. I suppose I should talk about that a little bit. Um, there's topography, there is satellite imagery, and then there's a hybrid mode where it's both. And the 3D view, you kind of get that Google Earth looking thing if you want to see like kind of what the mountains look like or something like that. So it's simple, those are the only layers that you have an option to, which is good in one way, bad in others. And we'll get into that later. Pro number three, private land is listed. And uh, so you can stop yourself from getting yelled at if you're accidentally camping on private land. That's definitely been a thing that I've always worried about is I don't wanna wake up in the middle of the night with somebody knocking on my door and it's some farmer's land and you're on some road in the middle of nowhere and you just so happen to be on their land. Maybe you're on BLM and you assume that you're still on BLM. It's not always the case. This app does have private land. So it has the private land stuff built into it, which is pretty cool. And on the flip side is if somebody does come to you and claim like, hey, you're on my neighbor's land or something like that, and this is so-and-so's land, I wouldn't put too much of a fight up. You could at least show them like, oh, I wasn't trespassing. I didn't mean anything by it. My app says this. Then you'd at least have something to be like, I wasn't just trying to squat on somebody's land. And so you can get on this app and it'll tell you what's public, what's private. And so you know of the areas that you can use. One of the pros that I already said was that I found a trail that I didn't even know was there and it was way cooler than I expected and I was basically camped on the trail I've camped there before had no idea that it was pretty cool back in there it didn't go very far but none of the other app options had it listed at all it was cool to find that trail was there even though it wasn't a very long trail I don't think a lot of people know that's there that maybe it's not worth going down because it was so short it only took me 30 40 minutes to go down but I had the place to myself I would have been circling around Utah trying to find that kind of isolation for a while had I not found that so uh, Onyx was very helpful for that. Another thing is quick copying of coordinates in case you're using another device or an app. So it does have a simple setup with waypoints where you can copy those waypoints really easily. So let's say I put a waypoint right here. So it makes it easy to copy your location and share them with somebody or something like that. It makes it easy to do that. So that is nice. And that will bring us into the cons of this app. So there's multiple subscriptions for different versions which means for somebody like myself, I hunt. And so that means that I have to pay twice for an app from a company that's basically doing the same thing. And the app for hunting and the app for off-roading are definitely different, but I know that they're using the same, uh, the main thing you're paying for with these is the satellite imagery because it's not like they own the satellites, they're buying this data from somebody and using that information. And so um, the fact that if I wanted to use this and the hunting one, I'm gonna be paying with this elite version. I mean, I'm gonna be paying upwards of $150 a year for basically the same app within two. I think it'd be more beneficial if these were kind of rolled into the same thing like some of the other options. Another con is the fact that you can't share a folder with others as far as I can find. You can share an individual waypoint, but not a collection. This is a hang up for my personal use because often our group meets up on a Friday night in the dark and people are coming from all over the place. As the group's trail planner, this is a big flaw for planning out routes with anybody else. Without even asking, I know none of my friends want to receive 40 text messages with individual waypoints and trails. And aside from that, trails can't even be added to a folder. So outside of overland use, even the casual weekend Jeep club can't build a folder with trails to share with everyone so they know exactly what's going on for the weekend. One of the last things is when I was using this and I had maps saved to my phone recently when I was in Utah, I did have issues whenever I would close out because let's say you're using Spotify or listening to a podcast or something and then you switch off and go back to Onyx. What I was noticing is there's kind of a delay. So, and I wasn't moving fast. I'm moving five miles an hour. I haven't gone very far. I know my, my phone is still tracking where I'm at, but I'd open it back up 
And there was several times throughout the weekend that I was out there that I had to actually close the app, open the app back up, let it load, which kind of takes a second and then hit the, the zero in and it'll come and find you. And that's having to do that several times. And it's just a minor thing, but it is annoying because if you're the trail leader, like I am in a lot of situations, let's look at the map here. If I'm coming up coffee pot road here and uh, my maps aren't updating and I have a whole group, four or five people behind me, and then my map isn't updating right, or I just switched a song, you know, sometimes you'll blow past your, your turn, which isn't a big deal. But if you're trying to cover a lot of ground in the backcountry and you're all in vehicles, getting five people to back up behind you because your GPS didn't quite update fast enough to where everybody knows to turn left or something, or you took a wrong turn. I'm sure the trail leaders out there will understand what I'm saying, but there's been several situations where I experienced that in the past when these apps weren't as developed as they are now. And so just the fact that it kind of stutters I can, it was already annoying me when I didn't have people behind me. I use my phone for my gimbal, for my drone, for my Sony camera, for my GoPro, for Spotify, for podcasts, and for maps. And so I'm switching between apps all the time. Most people are. And so for it to have a hiccup like that is kind of annoying. And the other apps don't do that. So it would be cool if that could be corrected. So the last thing against Onyx, it is by far the most expensive option on this list. It's like a hundred bucks for the elite version, which is insane. Seven day trial for free. Premium is $29.99 a year, which isn't too bad. Trails, unlimited saved maps, photo waypoints, 3D maps, and more. Elite is where you get the property boundaries, the landowner names, lot info. But at a hundred dollars a year, that's, that's a lot. And um, it's way more expensive than the other map option. So property boundaries, landowner names, and lot info and area acreage is uh, one of the things you get for the elite. So really most people probably don't even know that, but it's it might be something you want. So if you want the very top tier of this, it is expensive. Otherwise it's $29.99 a year, which isn't too bad, but it is a very basic app. And so um, just something to know. Okay, so let's jump into Trails Off-Road. I've been using Trails Off-Road for a number of years. You might've seen me wearing one of their t-shirts in some of my videos. I'm not sponsored by them. The only reason I have one of their shirts is I told them at the Overland Expo, they, they asked if I'd heard of them. And I was just like, oh yeah, I've been using you guys' stuff since the beginning. And they were super excited to hear that just because you know they're, they're a small company trying to grow. And so they gave me a free t-shirt, nothing more than that. I do have affiliate links for Trails Off-Road. And so if you do decide to sign up for it, please use those, it does help the channel out. But um, all right, so let's get into what Trails Off-Road is. Trails Off-Road is pretty awesome because as you can see here on this map, especially in Colorado. It's got quite a few trails going on. Most of these trails are the more well-known ones. And we'll go back into where we just were, Coffee Pot Road. And so um, these are super popular trails and I, Coffee Pot Road is more of a dirt road. And you have Topo, Satellite. This isn't really a navigation app. This is an app to find trails to plan your trip. And so it's, it's a little bit different than either of the other options. But uh, let's get into this. So Colorado, let's go to Colorado. And then we are going to Coffee Pot Road again. Okay, so let's say again, you're going through Glenwood Springs and this is the spot you plan to stop off for the night. So let's go to read more. Okay, so something I really like about this app is it gives you a lot of good information. One of the things that it gives you, it gives you all this, there's ghost towns, there's iconic mines, overland, rock crawling, whatever, snow wheeling. The most important thing to me on this is that it has reviews. And this is kind of a bad example because it doesn't look like there's many reviews on here. There's only a couple. Um, it gives you turn by turn with photos. So if something's confusing, they'll tell you turn at this tree or don't go past this or something like that. But, uh, oh, there's more reviews than it said. So as you can see here, the thing that makes Trails Off-Road different is that you get people's actual input on these trails, which is super important because like what I was saying, when I was talking about Utah and Colorado and you have snow melt and you have boulders coming into the road or you have big washes getting dug out and so now smaller stock vehicles can't get past it, you'll usually see that on trails off-road. And this is just users commenting, like I did this last weekend and they'll let you know when the snow's melted. The big advantage with that type of real-time input from people is basically you can go on here every year, every season. And in Colorado, this is particularly useful because we're always waiting for the snow to melt. And some years we have more snow than others. And so uh, I'm always wondering like, when are these trails accessible? I can go on here and there's always somebody that's like, we broke through the snow a couple weeks ago. And then somebody else will comment like, we made it up to such and such mile marker. And then finally you'll see somebody that's like, we made it all the way to the lake. And so now I know that I can actually go up there People usually comment, um, you know, it's not like this isn't anybody's job. This is just the users doing this. And somebody will comment like there's still a lot of snow on the ground, but the trail's open. You can go all the way to the top. 
pack your warm clothes and stuff like that. So I really like that because it's just, it's kind of a, uh, it's a kind of like a grassroots sort of a thing. And so this app has a special place for me because of that. It is very useful. I've seen updates on this over the years. This is definitely more advanced than it used to be. I've seen updates on here over the years where people are like, oh, this trail might be closed for the year because there's a huge boulder in there and the National Forest Service hasn't been able to get the equipment in there to move it because it's expensive to do that kind of stuff. So you can kind of plan around stuff and you actually know in kind of real time, within a couple weeks, you usually know something is inaccessible, especially these popular trails. So it gives you nearby trails, gives you all this information, gives you about how long it will take you to get through it, the mileage, uh, the nearest towns and stuff, which is cool. Directions to the trail is very useful because what I found in Utah, um, I don't know, this video will be out soon. I went to go look for my friends in Utah and they had started a trail before me because I was taking so long to get there. And so what I was doing is I was trying to find them while well, I used trails off-road to find the trail that they told me they're doing. And then this will give you directions to the trailhead. And not only will it give you directions to the trailhead, but you can also get directions to the end of the trail. So in my situation, those guys started a couple hours before me. I didn't even know it could do it at the time. I got on the app told it I wanted directions to the end of the trail and so I can meet up with them halfway, which didn't work out, but you'll see that in the video. So um, so that's cool. You can share the trail, you can add to favorites, you can print the trail, uh, download the GPX file. So if you are using something like, uh, I don't know if Garmin Overlander, I'm sure it does support that kind of a file. So with GPX files, I used to use this with Gaia Maps and you can download the GPX files and then upload that into Gaia Maps. Well, now they just have it to where you can just import it straight into Gaia Maps and uh, you just click this and it'll just add it to it. And so that is pretty incredible because it just makes it super easy to do. And um, you don't even have to think about it. You just click it, it'll ask you to sign in your guy maps and then it'll just automatically load it in there. So it goes straight in your map app, which is pretty cool. So this one is a little more simple just because it's basically, this is what you get. I get on here all the time before a weekend's coming up, we're planning stuff. I'll get on here and check stuff out and then I know what's open, what's closed. And I use this quite a bit. I've gotten used to using, I think I've been using it for six years now. Whenever they first launched, I was one of the one of the early guys on this. And so I found it to be a very cool app, very useful. It grows a little bit here and there, but I have heard that this is more for the West and there's a lot of the country doesn't have as many trails in here. So Trails Off-Road is a much simpler app. It's much different of an app just because it's not the same as Gaia or Onyx Off-Road. It's sort of a supplemental thing. You would use this to add to another app. I will say that most of the trails that are on here, it probably all of the trails that are on here are on Onyx, but I would say that this has a more accurate um, system for giving you insight on what's open, what is hard, what's not, because you'll see those comments on here of somebody said that this is an easy trail. I went up there with my stock, such and such, and it was super hard or it was super easy and this should be rated a zero or something like that. It's basically a dirt road, that kind of a thing. And so, um, just keep that in mind because this is not really an all-inclusive thing, but it does have an app and I will go over the phone app here shortly because the phone app's actually pretty cool and they did a few things that I really like, but it's such a simple system that they're able to do some things with their phone app that the others aren't. So we'll get into that in a little while. Okay, so the people that they hire, the, the Trails Off-Road team, they go through and do all these photos initially for the actual write-up. And then other people update it with their own photos of what it looks like. Here it is covered in snow. Here you can see all sorts of information, who wrote all this stuff up. And then you can ask questions, which they don't get answered like right away, but you can ask questions if, if you're like, hey, can a full-size Tundra make it up here? And people will respond to that. So anyway, it's a cool app. Uh, and I wanted to include it because it's one of the main ones that I use. I really do like this app. All right, so this is Trails Off-Road. This app is super simple compared to the other ones. So if you click on one of the trails, it'll pull it up, and click on it, and then you go to the reviews, click 10 reviews. And uh, so this is where you can find your updates on people that have been up there recently. Nobody's been up there this year because this is still under feet of snow. But anyway, so all that information, just like the website is still there. Uh, you got your favorites, you got your offline stuff. You download an entire state and that's it. It is so easy to do that. So if I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna be in Arizona soon, available. So I click it and it downloads relatively fast. And Arizona is now downloaded. Super simple. Now I have all of that offline data. And while this isn't gonna give you turn-by-turn -turn directions, which really none of these do, 
if I needed to zoom in, I at least have this kind of a mapping system. So I can at least see where a road is or where a trail is and really basic information. So for what that just downloaded, this is really useful to have. And the thing is, is you don't need a desktop to make this work with Gaia Maps. So let's get back to one of these trails. Let's click on this one. So Grizzly Jeep Trail. So from what I've seen, you cannot download these to Gaia through your phone. It does require your Gaia subscription on a desktop computer, which is not really a big deal, but just so you know. Click on a trail, it'll bring it up. And one of the cool things about this is directions. And this is what I was talking about before. You get your first waypoint or the last waypoint. So you can do a trail backwards and it'll give you directions relatively easily. And it'll just link up with Google Maps or Apple Maps. And of course on Samsung, I'm sure it's something else, whatever you guys use, probably Google, I'm sure. And anyway, so those are your options there. And uh, that's the way that works. So that's pretty cool. You do have these different layers. These different layers do download to your um, offline information. So anyway, it's cool that you have an entire state. This is very handy because once you have it downloaded, you don't have to really worry about, oh, I forgot to download for a certain area. So this one's much more simple. So we're going to keep this short, but that's what you get with Trails Off-Road. As you can see right away, I've got a few maps on here or a few trails, but there are no trails popping out, nor is there an option to make all the trails pop out. Now you can see that in two different ways. Um, you can see that as good, you can see that as bad, but I will say right off the bat that Gaia is a much more professional app. So I can explain why this is a much more professional app right away. It has features such as tracking. It has features such as planning a route. Um, you can record your track as you go whether you're you're whether you're driving or hiking it'll tell you your, it'll tell you how fast you're going it'll tell you your altitude it'll tell you all sorts of things not only can i plan off-road treks on here but i can plan the entire route on here i do usually use google maps but i like to have my entire route usually planned out on here as well so a lot of times when i'm driving and doing these longer trips I'll go through places and I think that I'll, oh, Google Maps will get us to the next waypoint and then we'll use Gaia or we'll use whatever when we hit the off-road stuff. But that's not always the case because a lot of times, especially in the mountains, you don't have service. So if you try to remap something or where's this or where's that, you can't really do that. And so um, the thing about Gaia is Gaia is a much more professional app because of all the options it has. And you can see right here, I am paying for the premium version, which I believe is $39.99, so it's a little bit more than on X Maps, but you do get a lot more. It's a little bit more complicated. Is it's not as just turn it on. There's a trail. Let's go. This is very much more a you could plan an expedition anywhere with this thing. This is a much more complex system. So I want to go into oh yeah. So now they've actually added an overlanding map feature. So you can go in here. So this even has a map layer that'll tell you where cell phones reception is. So let's click that, all carriers. So it'll go in and it'll tell you, oh yeah, if you're going up here to camp, you're not gonna have service or maybe you're gonna get a bar. Let me just tell you right now, I don't know how accurate that is. It's kind of cool that it has it, but I don't know how accurate that, that is. So you, you exit that out. Every time you click one of the plus signs on this, it'll add it to your favorite map layers pretty much. And so uh, you can see 24 hour forecasts. I wouldn't believe that. Trail forks, mountain bike, satellite with labels, satellite topo. And so you can see these different apps. There are so many different options. All the yellow here that you're seeing, that is all BLM land because there's a BLM land overlay. Let's go back and let's look at these different layers just because I think this is something that's very important to be showing off. The United States, Canada, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, Asia, satellite imagery, roadmaps. This goes through one of the big ones, especially if you are using a drone um this is a big one to me that this has the aviation maps built into it so you can put this layer down and so for me for making videos and stuff i have a license to be flying a drone and making money with a drone so i have to pay attention to this kind of stuff so i can load this up i can see where airports are so if you fly a drone you make any money off of it you have to see this kind of stuff. Gaia does tell you that this isn't 100% perfectly accurate. It might be off by a little bit, but it gives me an idea of where I can fly, what kind of airspace I'm around. This is a big one, I think, 
for people that are flying a drone. This is stuff that you need to be looking at anyway. And so the aviation stuff is very useful. And so that's a big plus for me. So as you can see here, um, I will be going to Baja soon. So let's go down and use Baja as an example for this. You have a National Geographic map. They also have all of the national park maps or most of the national park maps. And it shows up just like this. These are the National Geographic maps for these areas, just like you would buy and have a paper map. And you know, there's nothing against having paper maps. A lot of people prefer to use a paper map, but I'll tell you what, it is really nice to have this on your screen too, because you could plan out everything on the computer, have the same exact map for the National Geographic stuff, and you could plot it and plan it alongside this. So this is really cool that they offer this system because these maps are like 10, 12 bucks a piece if you get them printed. And so the fact, the fact that they're on here is really cool. And so these types of maps, as you can see here down in Baja, tells you some basic information. You know, these aren't super detailed, but it's helping you get around. It's telling you some of these places you can go to, tells you that there's fishing here, that there's an airport here. And those little things are really nice and they add up and they make the whole experience much more useful. Let's jump back to Colorado. All right, so we're back in Glenwood Springs. Right from the get-go, Gaia is a pretty complicated map, I gotta say. But um, once you learn how to use it, you know, just use it for, mess around with it on your phone for a weekend, you'll get the gist of it. They must have updated something because my layers have been, um, they're not saved like they normally are. Guy Topo is one of my favorites. Satellite is one of my primary. And like I was saying, the National Park Visitor, uh, 14ers for the, you, you climbers out there. There's all sorts of stuff. Native American and Alaskan lands. Actually, I am gonna add that because I wanna go see some more of that stuff. What I'm getting at is this, this just goes on and on and it's so in depth that you have more options to see more stuff. And it's just like a better thought out system in my opinion. So just like you can in Onyx, uh, you can go through and make files and categorize this stuff. So like I have my Baja folder here and this has all of my information. The big thing with this is you can plan routes a little bit more easily and it's got a pretty cool setup. So usually I like to click off of satellite imagery to plan a route. So when you plan an actual route, let's do this for instance. So you can click on a road and it identifies that that's a road. And so you, you draw a straight line there and it automatically maps it out. And it'll do this, so let's click there. This is chugging my computer a little bit. But as you can see, it automatically traces it out. So if you want to plan a route out, and I use this to go all the way to Washington, and I planned out some stuff for Washington, this is by far the most in-depth app out of all of them. And if you combine this with Trails Off-Road, you can find a lot of cool stuff. But that is the thing, is you have to combine it with Trails Off-Road, or you have to venture out and find your own, or find them through forums or something like that, or different books and stuff. Um, I do hope that they come out with an off-road type of identification app for Gaia because if they do that, then honestly, it'll be the best app ever. There are a lot of really cool trails on Onyx Off-Road that Gaia just doesn't have. You gotta kind of find it on your own. So as you can see here on Gaia, these trails are here, like Coffee Pot Road is right up here. And so you can see it, but it doesn't stick out as Onyx Off-Road kind of showed that as more of a trail and it's, it's, it's a, it's a graded road and so basically this kind of tells you like oh that's easy but then once you get up here there's some more off-road stuff going on so it's just something to keep in mind is this doesn't make it stick out like a sore thumb but you can get on here and you can see these roads and see that there's a lake up here and be like oh what is that and then you can do a little bit of research that's the way i usually plan trips that and trails off-road a lot of the times but i'm more of personally like an explorer i'm not always just like looking to go find an off-road trail and so a lot of times this sort of a thing helps me a little bit more because I'm just like, oh, that looks cool on the map. I want to go see that. Okay, so let's get into how you download maps on Gaia Maps. So all these apps are slightly different. This is how Gaia does it. What you need to do up here is you need to touch the three tiles in the top right corner. Those will tell you what maps you currently have active right here. And so these are the ones that I have. You can drag up more. The more you drag up, the bigger the file sizes will be. And some of these like satellite, satellites, a high resolution image. So you're going to be limited on how many you can save. For instance, with just Gaia Topo selected, you could save almost an entire state. Whenever you have satellite in, you get much smaller areas that you can save. So I'm going to click done here. I'm just going to leave those as they are. Now I'm going to press the plus, download maps. And these are your options. So the dark red here is something that I've already downloaded before. And this area is, uh, or this selection box is something that I can use, drag around. 
This is the map we've been talking about or the area we've been talking about. So if I select this area up here by Coffee Pot Road, I can save. And as you can see right here, it says 31 megabytes and 675 tiles. So these are limited to 10,000, which is actually pretty large. It's not like an entire state, but it's a pretty good amount of area. But this is where this gets kind of annoying because I'm just going to use this small area as an example. If this were a 10,000 tile section, I wish that these would lock together because as you can see here, when I go down, these two areas are overlapping, doubling up on the, uh, the data. You're saving the same thing multiple times. And I also wish that you could click this other red box down here that's already downloaded and find out exactly which layers are active there. That would be very helpful. But usually what I do every season at least, or if I'm going on a completely different trip in another state, I delete all of my maps that are downloaded because your waypoints and stuff will not get deleted with those. And then you can download all new maps so you know exactly what you're downloading. I tend to use the same layers, but still it would be nice to know like what I downloaded for that particular situation. So anyway, you hit save. And um, this is kind of a new thing here. This didn't used to be this way, but you can add in things to add to this big uh, mix of maps and what you have going on. So that's pretty cool. And so uh, anyway, I'll just leave the maps that I have on there right now. Click next and you can name these and then you can add them to a different folder. So I have like video demo here for what we're doing. Hit save. And then as they start to save, uh, it'll bring you to this menu. Now you do need to leave this open while these download. These are all my Baja maps that I have downloading right now. And then anytime you're on the actual map, you can see the spinning wheel up here. Click that and it takes you right back to what's going on. It's my best practice is I will start this process while I'm watching a movie or something like that. Leave it open, turn your phone upside down or something on the coffee table, and do not exit the app. You need to let it all download. And always make sure that you have these downloaded before a trip. This is on Wi-Fi and these download relatively slow. So if you're on cellular, these will download extremely slow, especially if it's the satellite imagery. Um, so something to remember. And since we're in the app, I'm just gonna go through. You can record tracks. So in the app here, you can see your current speed, you can see your course, your elevation, all this stuff. It's pretty useful actually. These are different areas that people actually have added. You don't have to make your stuff public, but there's a lot of stuff that is public on here. So you can kind of find new places to explore, which is cool. Your save stuff, you have folders, you have your maps, routes, all that stuff in individual areas. So anyway, that's Gaia Maps. So here's the pros and cons for Gaia. Pros is by far, it is the most in-depth and professional type of routing. If you're going to plan an expedition, you might use Trails Off-Road or Onyx as like a supplemental thing of this is an area we got to get through. So you'll look up the information of how hard that is. But if you are going somewhere to find something, you're going to go find some petroglyphs or something like that. You're going to use something like Gaia. Gaia is just better. If there was a professional team planning an expedition, for sure they would use Gaia. This is the app to use for something like that. Pro number two is you have the National Geographic stuff built into it, and that is a super awesome feature. Now that is the step up. Whenever you sign up for the very basic, cheapest version, you don't get all the map layers. You do have to sign up for that. But unlike Onyx, um, when you sign up for that premium, you get a lot more for your money. You get all the same stuff as Onyx Off-Road aside from the trail stuff. So with uh, with Gaia, you get private land, you get public land, you get owner identification information. That all shows up and it's less than half the cost of that full tier on X. So that's a big thing. Way more options for different types of overlays to the point of overwhelming almost, I gotta say, uh, but I really only end up using a few of them and you'll find the ones you like. When you first get the app, you'll be like, holy crap, and you'll add a bunch of them on there. But once you see how much space and how complicated it is to save all that, you'll really start to find the ones that you actually use. There's so many overlays with Gaia that it's almost a fault because you can get too complicated with it for sure. And when you get the app, you'll kind of learn how to download maps and uh, you'll find the ones that you actually use, the ones you actually don't use. And so um, pretty quick, you'll figure all that out. But there are a lot of options. When it comes to hunting season, there's even a GMU, uh, the game units. You can pull that up and it'll tell you which game units you're in, stuff like that. So this works as Onyx has different apps for hunting and for off-roading. This is an app that just does everything. It can be used for way more than off-road and overland travel. There's light pollution overlays for photographers on here. Myself, I like to go out and do night lapses. If I know that there's a weekend coming up where there's not going to be a moon out, I will head out into the desert and go do time lapses of the stars coming up over the mountains. You've seen them in my videos and you'll see it at the end of this video. 
And I like going out and doing that kind of stuff. There's a light pollution layer that I can put up and I can go find areas that are not contaminated with lights from cities and stuff. All the layers are just a big pro. Light pollution overlays, cell phone coverage overlays, native lands, mountaineering routes, aviation for drone users and stuff. It just goes on and on. It's very useful. So it's $39.99 for this and you get a lot more than you get on either of the other maps. But in my opinion, it's best combined with Trails Off-Road and the two of these Trails Off-Road plus guy is cheaper than the full version of uh, Onyx maps. And I mean, you know, Onyx is awesome, but it is expensive. You're not getting as much as you're getting with Gaia. Gaia is a far deeper app. Trails Off-Road, one of the big pros is Trails Off-Road is integrated into this. So when you go on there, as I was showing, you can click on something and it'll automatically just add it into the map. If there's a trail right here, I can go find that add to the, the trails for summer 2022. I can add it to a folder and it'll just pop up and now I have those trails isolated on my maps. I can save those when I need them and uh, you're good to go. And so it, it is integrated so you can find trails a lot easier that way. Um, and then the last one, the last pro for this is it's extremely fast. If I am using Spotify or my drone app or something else, if I switch in between that app and Gaia, it doesn't forget where I was and it doesn't crash the app and it doesn't mess with anything. It just works. And so I do appreciate that because I'm always switching between all these apps to control the GoPro, control my camera, control the drone, that kind of stuff. So I do appreciate that it just automatically knows where it's at because oftentimes I'm up against that. So it's a, it's a beneficial feature for me, maybe not for you, but to me, it makes a big difference because I want it to act like a GPS. I don't want it to forget where I'm at because the, the map's not open. The cons for Gaia Off-Road. First one is because it's so in-depth and it's so expansive, what you can do with the software, it's almost confusing. It takes a while to get used to it. They have kind of isolated some of those issues over time. And I do like that. Sharing files and folders has been an issue for me in the past. When I send a link to the team, it doesn't always work. Updated waypoints don't always update whenever they're in service. And uh, I would think that shared folders would update quickly for the very purpose of why you're sharing them. So for instance, when I went to Utah last year and we we're looking for the dinosaur footprints, I had different people coming in different days. I went out several days early with the camper and um, I had planned out some maps and a meeting point. Well, the meeting point, it was super windy up there. So I updated the, the maps and I went out and I closed all my other apps and I had Gaia open and I updated the waypoints on the map. I deleted other waypoints that I had on there before and I added new ones. I went in where I had full service, went out and waited, had my phone sitting on the dash for like a half hour to update. And I was like, surely it's done it by now. Headed back in and then people started showing up and they were going to the wrong place because it didn't upload properly. It didn't work for them. And so I would think that that would update. That That's definitely a con that could be corrected. At the same time, it's nice that you can plan a route and share it with everybody. That way your whole team knows what's going on. Because when I plan trips and I'm usually the guy in the group that plans the trips, I can share it with Jesse. I can share it with Mark. I can share it with whoever's going with me. And so when they show up, they usually have the same maps backed up in case I break my phone or something like that. We're not just completely screwed on our route. We've got backups of what's going on. Everybody's in the know. And you can also allow people to add different waypoints. Like I can add a, a campsite somewhere. And if somebody else has been there before, they can be like, oh no, that's a bad spot. This secret one over here, there's actually a road there under these trees or something like that. Let's go there. So it's kind of cool that people can, can kind of work together and collaborate on making a map or making... An, uh, an overland route so that's pretty beneficial but anyway sharing with the updates with sharing i do see as a con downloading areas can be super annoying so gaia downloads with tiles because it has to be downloaded in segments uh, whenever you have a higher resolution map for like satellite imagery you can download smaller spaces because it has to be ten thousand tile spaces i'm sure there's a reason for that but it's been that way since gaia came out and i don't see why it hasn't been updated i would think that they could update it and um it's annoying to match up the blocks and know that if I'm doubling up on data, sometimes when I'm downloading for Gaia, I'll have a uh, Gaia Topo satellite imagery and let's say um, a national park map. If I have to extend that out and I have to do another set of tiles because I'm maxed out, I can overlap and so you're wasting space. It'd be nice if there's an option to kind of lock those together to where you're not downloading twice of some of the same information because they are big files. When adding folders, it can get confusing when you're adding waypoints to a certain folder because I have tried to build folders for like the Baja one. And sometimes for whatever reason, if I'm trying to add stuff over to the Baja folder, it doesn't want to move over to it. And uh, it's just something that's popped up every once in a while and it's not always a problem, but sometimes I'll move stuff and I know I move stuff 
And then when I go back to the app or I look at it on my phone a little while later, it hasn't moved and I have to do it again. And I don't know why that happens. So once you start adding all this stuff to your map, there's not an easy way to just make it all go away. Like if I want to see just what's going on for my Baja trip, I don't know of a good way to make everything else go away. I just want to see Baja. So all these waypoints that I've had from over the years that don't necessarily have a folder, it's just I'll be driving down the road and I'll see something and be like, I want to see this again at some point. I want to go explore that trail. So I'll add a waypoint as I drive by. So I won't put that in any particular place, but that'll show up forever. And if you don't want to see that, you can click an icon to make it go away. But when you have hundreds, if not thousands of these things on your computer or in your phone, um, it's annoying. And there should be a way to turn everything off and only view one folder. There should be a quick way to do that. Because for when I plan Baja, or for instance, when I'm making this video, I honestly don't want to share where all my trails and stuff are because I've got some secret spots just like everybody does. So it'd be nice if I could just click that, get rid of it, and uh, make that all go away. So anyway, it's kind of a small thing, but uh, I do wish that I could go away because after you've been using this for years and years, it really does start to stack up. And I got to add this as a con. While it is, while it has every road or path imaginable, it doesn't actually highlight it like it does on Onyx. If you combine Gaia with Trails Off-Road and you save those, those uh, trails onto Gaia Maps, they're going to stick out just like they do on Onyx, but still you're not going to get as many of them. Even though it has like overland stuff built into it it would be cool if they pulled from the same information that onyx uses um, maybe onyx has exclusive rights to it but it would be cool if Gaia could pull some of these off-road trails in and actually highlight them maybe as like a layer a map layer for colorado trails or something like that and they just show up the same way because there are a lot more routes that you can find more easily Gaia probably has, they probably have all the same roads, but they're more often highlighted. Now, every single road on, on X isn't going to show up as trail such and such. It'll just say unnamed road, but somebody puts a green line on it. Maybe it's just a dirt road. Maybe it's not. Personally, when it comes time to paying for these apps, I will be choosing Gaia and Trails Off-Road. Onyx offers incredible features, but the cost for me is just too high as the features of Gaia are now a necessity for my personal use and it's far cheaper. Having all of them is of course the ultimate way to travel, but most of us cannot afford that option. Click the links below to explore and find out what works best for you and let me know your top pick. And as always, thank you so much for watching and until next time.